Today, we're going to talk about 10 traits of winners. And what do I mean by winners? I've been fortunate as a coach over the last 15 years to work with high quality athletes in the NFL, NBA, NHL, to work with high performing executives, attorneys, business owners, people who are kicking ass at life, even with hectic schedules, even with a lot of demands, even with a lot of stress. And I can't stress enough that being a winner is not something that is innate. It is a set of habits, skills, mindsets that are developed over time and repeated consistently. And frankly, most people do not have these traits. Most people have an external locus of control, meaning they believe that circumstances outside of their control are what are dictating their results. They quit early. They're victim-minded. They blame genetics. They blame a lack of time. They blame the political environment for the reason that they are not succeeding in a way that they think they should be, right? And when these people do not meet the expectations that are set, they do not meet their goals, they end up quitting. Whereas winners are tough, they're resilient, they have a ability to focus on what's going to be most important and to be able to delay gratification in pursuit of the goals that mean the most to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these 10 traits of winners, things that I've picked up directly from my clients, from the people I've been privileged to work with. And hopefully you find some incredible insight and can take some of these different traits and apply them directly to your life. And it's important to note that not everyone's going to be perfect. Some of these might challenge you, they might piss you off a little bit, and that's okay because that's how we learn. And that's how we have a different approach and we can get different results with the things that we most want to accomplish in life. And so the number one trait of winners is they have an internal locus of control. So as I mentioned before, an external locus of control is believing that outside forces dictate the outcomes that you're going to get. In the fitness world, I see people blame their genetics, they blame fitness influencers, they blame bad advice in these different areas. Make no mistake, consuming bad information sucks. And we all have different genetics. We all have different backgrounds that do play a role. But ultimately, whatever hand that we are dealt is up to us to find a way to navigate, right? I remember very keenly when I was sitting down with an IRS investigator after I was robbed of $100,000 when I had started my business, long story. And he looked at me, his name is George Warnock. And he said, Eric, you know what? Sometimes bad shit happens to good people. And it is not your fault that this happened, but it's still your responsibility to deal with it. And that was a big mindset shift for me because I just lost all this money that I'd saved up that I had thought I sent to the IRS for my taxes years previously. And there I was thinking, oh man, this is not great, but hey, it wasn't my fault that all my money got stolen from a, a fraud that stole over $20 million from local businesses, right? No, it was still my responsibility to deal with the circumstances that were at hand. And so in many cases, people believe that these external circumstances, they don't have time, they have bad genetics are the reason that they are not getting results. But the reality is those are the circumstances that you are dealt. And if you have an internal locus of control, belief that you are responsible, that you are in control of the outcomes in your life and you are committed to doing the work, even if it takes longer, even if it's harder, even if it's not as fast as you want that you can achieve success, that is what leads to the results that we're after. And so we can't have an external locus of control, blaming different circumstances, blaming genetics, blaming all these things for not building the body, not building the business, not building the life that we want. We need an internal locus of control and the ability to take ultimate responsibility to be able to do the things that are necessary to achieve the goals that we want in life, because you can get there. There's always somebody who had worse genetics. There's always somebody who came from a lower bottom. There's always somebody who had fewer opportunities. And you know what? They had that internal locus of control and they did what was necessary to achieve success even when it looked impossible from the outside. The second trait is the ability to kill off habits that do not serve you. Everyone has bad habits. Everyone has vices. People have their highlight reel on social media and people struggle behind the scenes. That's the reality of life that we see. But those who tend to succeed, first, they take that ultimate responsibility and that internal locus of control that I previously mentioned, but they also focus on killing the habits that are not alignment with the person that they want to be. The number one way that we build self-confidence, that we build self-belief is by being able to make promises to ourselves and be able to keep them. And in many cases, that means maybe changing habits that no longer serve you. It means changing, getting rid of vices that do not serve you. Maybe you have the habit of drinking too much when you're stressed out. And therefore, when you're drinking too much, when you're stressed out, you get more stressed, you don't sleep well, you eat junk food and you gain weight. Well, killing off that particular habit of maybe drinking when you are stressed out is going to be something that leads to you better health, better cognitive function, better work performance, better relationships, better resilience to stress. And so 
it's not easy to look at the things and the habits that we have that don't serve ourselves. We all have them. We've all done things that do not serve ourselves and get into a habit and we want to be able to break it. But it requires a look in the mirror and it requires understanding why we're acting in a certain way and then being able to step back and not give in to that immediate gratification. Another common example that I see with a lot of people is stress eating at night. They get into this habit because maybe they've worked a long day and then they have kids at the end of the day and they're so stressed out that they finally sit down on the couch they finally have a couple seconds to themselves. They finally have the ability to relax and enjoy and get that dopamine rush. And what do they do? They plop down, they throw on Netflix, and they pour through half a box of cereal. Boom. Well, you know what? The cereal might taste good, especially Captain Crunch. Like, let's be real. But if we learn to deal with that stress, if we learn to be proactive in preventing ourselves from getting to the point where we feel so exhausted, where we feel that we need to retake control and we need to reward ourselves with a big dopamine hit of binge eating, we start to be able to proactively make better decisions that are in alignment with the goals and the, being the person that we want to ultimately become. So focus on killing off any bad habits that do not serve you. And in many cases, this comes down to first being aware as to why this is a habit. And then second, it comes down to designing your environment where it becomes difficult to do the things that do not serve you and easier to do the things that are in alignment with the person that you do want to become. The third trait of winners is having somebody who is goal-focused. If you are a goal-focused individual, you do not say, I want to lose weight. You tend to be very specific in what exactly you want to accomplish. If we are not specific with setting our goals, then our goals are often become a pipe dream. We don't have any data to measure our progress. We don't have what we call KPIs in the business world, key performance indicators. The same thing with fitness. So for example, if you want to lose 15 pounds in 90 days and have abs, like that's a much better goal than saying, I just want to lose weight. Why? Because we have something specific that we are looking for. We can reverse engineer that, hey, in 90 days, it's three months, which means I need to lose five pounds per month in order to lose that 15 pounds. That means a little bit over a pound per week. Can I focus on losing a pound per week? Yeah, that's not bad. We think about that, right? Like it's a lot easier to focus on losing that one pound per week each and every single week. Okay, 1.125, I believe is what it comes out to. But being able to do that each and every single week versus saying like, oh shit, I have 15 pounds to lose, right? Conversely, if we also look at something financial, let's say you want to make 2 million bucks a year within the next five years. Awesome. Well, guess what? We've got to reverse engineer what that looks like. What product are you going to sell? What does the business look like? What are the price points, right? If we just have pipe dream of, I want to make more money. If we just have a pipe dream of like, I want to look better. We do not have anything tangible that we can actually start to put into, into focus in order to achieve those particular results. The fourth trait of winners is being able to have singularity of focus towards that specific goal. Using fitness as another example, I talk to a lot of people who say, I'm going to lose fat. I want to build muscle. Well, the reality is these are different goals. They require a different physiological process when it comes to nutrition. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't lose some fat and build some muscle at the same time, but it is in a way a very incongruent goal because it requires opposite demands when it comes to energy balance, right? And so what we have to remember when it comes to focus is the ideas, being able to have an idea or have a goal does not necessarily make us special. Our ability to implement does. And in today's world, we're pulled a million different directions. If we do not have singularity of focus towards the one particular thing that we want to accomplish at one particular time, it becomes incredibly difficult to actually achieve it. If you are changing goals in the gym every two to three weeks, you're never going to be able to take the actions that are needed to be able to achieve success in any one of them. If you change what your career goals are every month, change what your business model looks like, you're never going to be able to take the actions and get the reps in to develop the skills that you need to accomplish the goals that you want. A clear-cut example here would be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold became the world's best bodybuilder. Before that, he was an elite-level powerlifter, or a very strong powerlifter, I shall say. He became a top action star, and then the governor, and then wrote multiple books. These are all major goals that he had, but he didn't accomplish them all at once. He had singularity of focus with each individual one. He committed one time to being, first, I'm going to be the best bodybuilder that I can. Next, I want to be the top action star that I can be. Notice he wasn't trying to be the best bodybuilder in the world and the top action star at the same time and the governor at the same time. It was sequentially focused on having singularity of focus towards one goal at a time. And especially in the world of fitness, especially when it comes to changing your health, do not get pulled into the idea of chasing multiple goals at the same time and try to piecemeal workouts together and try to piece together different nutrition strategies, trying to have it all. And much better focus is to be able to go all in on one thing until you accomplish it. When you develop that skill and you can accomplish it, it becomes very easy to maintain it, right? Like when Arnold was an action star, even though he wasn't a bodybuilder, he still looked pretty damn good, right? Well, same thing when it comes to anything else, else in fitness. 
if you commit to the point of getting lean and say you get to 12% body fat, even though you want to build muscle or you want to lose fat and build muscle, well, guess what? Your body's going to have an easier ability to build that lean tissue without getting body fat once you're already lean. Whereas if you try to lose a little bit of fat, build a little bit of muscle, lose a little bit of fat, build a little bit of muscle, well, then the results happen so slowly that most people change gears, they quit what they're doing, they never achieve either one. So commit to one goal at a time, and then you can put that particular goal kind of on maintenance mode because you've developed and mastered that skill set, and then you start to stack success on top of it. In the world of business, again, same thing. Like Whenever I'm working with somebody in a consulting role, or even myself, when I'm developing a new skill set, I focus on one thing at a time. And so, for example, as a young coach, everything was focused like... First, what I want to do is I wanted to master the strength and conditioning performance side of things. And so maybe for one quarter of the year, I would go all in and I would be studying dynamic effort or powerlifting and building strength. Maybe the second one would be now we're going to focus on speed mechanics and I'm going to go an inch wide and a mile deep on this particular component. Maybe when it came to business skill sets, I would focus on copywriting, meaning everything I would consume would be focused on copywriting, writing better marketing messaging. And then maybe it would be sales. How can I become better at actually closing sales, that being better on the actual sales call itself, right? So whatever goals you want to accomplish, we have to be able to have that singularity of focus. And when we start to stack skills and go an inch wide, but a mile deep on developing them individually, then we can start to master one skill, stack another one on top of it. And that's how we build an incredible skill set while accomplishing all the things that we want. Trait number five of winners, winners are competitive. And it's not always just competitive with other people, it's competitive with themselves. And let me give you an example. My wife, Lauren, incredible runner, absolutely incredible. Now, when she runs, she's often the top 1% running these races. She's competing against people who are former Division One athletes. And Lauren picked up running in her mid-20s, right? It wasn't that she was a D1 athlete and had all these things. She just picked it up because she wanted to be competitive with herself. She doesn't as much care about how other people are performing. She's focused each and every single run on becoming the best version of herself, on challenging herself beyond what she believes that she's capable of, right? And winners in all areas are very much the same. Reason why is that competition, both with self and against others, well, it's scary. And sometimes you're going to lose. And what's sad is, you know, I was born in 1989, 34, 35 years old, probably this is coming out. And we grew up in an age of participation trophies and fucking fruit snacks, even if you lose by 40 in middle school playing basketball. And what this does is this teaches people to settle for mediocrity and just like, oh, it's okay. Well, you know what? Like, that's cool. It's cute. You might feel good at the time, but that's not how the world works. Winner, like the world plays for keeps, right? Like you win or you learn. And so when people are focused on winning, they play for keeps. They find out how to prepare to win. And when you find out how to prepare to win, that is what controls whether you can actually win and achieve the things that you're looking for in different areas. And I think this is a key reason why you see so many athletes who are great at what they do, who are absolute dogs on the field, dogs on the court, find out how they can transfer these traits to different areas. Kobe Bryant, before his passing, was incredible in the business world. He was incredible, actually, at producing films. Michael Jordan, eh, maybe not the best in terms of being a general manager, but you know what? He became a damn general manager and an owner of an NBA franchise. He built a massive shoe brand that rakes in billions of dollars every single year. Why? Well, because he's a winner. He approaches his ability the same way that he prepared in basketball is how he prepares for different areas in life. Any reason, is there any surprise when you see, for example, these athletes who are world-class athletes go on and kill it in different areas? No, because they know how to win. They know what it takes. They understand the competition aspect and how much hard work it requires. And so start being competitive. If you're in the gym, keep a logbook. Can you beat your numbers previously? Can you get a little bit stronger? Can you be more consistent? Can you keep showing up? When you're competitive with the numbers that you set, that allows you to really push for that excellence that you need to thrive in different areas of your life. Now, the sixth trait of winners is they drink insane amounts of dark roast coffee. Just kidding. They might, but they are structured and they are disciplined. So in the gym, they have a plan. They know what they're going to do and then they do it. Many of my clients are high performers in their careers. And one of the best things that they say that I do for them is, Eric, I have a great plan. All I have to do is go in and execute it. So the reality is like anytime that we want to be able to succeed in any area, we want to be able to have a plan. Like success doesn't just happen. Jeff Bezos didn't build Amazon. Just like, hey, here's some books. I'm not going to pay attention to what these numbers are. I'm not going to pay attention to any key metrics. That's not how it works. Right? People don't build incredible physiques just by winging it in the gym. They don't just eat whatever they want when they're motivated. They have a game plan and they know what they're going to do and then they go and do it. Same thing when it comes to the training and same thing when it comes to nutrition. It's not about just eating what they feel like when they feel like and giving into those impulses. When we want to be able to be successful, we need that structure. We need that discipline. 
And so some of the most important things that I've learned is being able to take a step back and really plan my day, right? Like what are the most important tasks? And then can we do them early on? As a baseline foundation, being able to have a calendar to know exactly what you're going to be doing at what particular time is a great way to be able to operate because it gives you a clear cut plan for operating and taking the tasks that are necessary to get the results that you're looking for. And so there are a lot of different ways you can do it, a lot of different ways you can set it up. And we have other videos on this channel that you can go check out regarding setting your day and being structured and being disciplined. But the important concept here is winners will build structure so they can take actions that are needed for success. A quick example here, uh, my client, Tim, worked with him for nearly 15 years. I'm executive in the oil industry. I think he still has bigger arms and calves than I do. Shout out, Tim. Way to keep at it, man. And each and every single day, even before he hired me as a coach, he would train at noon, three days a week, at least. And the other days he'd be doing cardio. So for me, he was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like clock work for years as a personal training client. Why? He knew if he didn't carve out that particular time for himself during the middle of the day, in his words, he would want to kill somebody by the end of it because the stress of his work was so high that he needed to do something for himself to relieve that stress and to be able to be as sharp as he could be mentally and physically. But by building that structure in for his day, it allowed him to take the actions necessary to not only improve his health, but by extension of improving his health, improve his performance when it came to the way that he performed in his job. Trait number seven of winners, they will batch process, meaning they will do tasks that are similar all together. As a quick example, when I'm doing podcasts, I'm often doing two, three, or four during the first half of a day. I'm not doing them sporadically at completely different times because I know when my energy level levels are highest. I know when my focus is highest. I know when I am best at doing certain tasks. The opposite of batch tasking would be task switching, right? And so if we are constantly switching what we're doing, we're never really able to get into a flow. We're never able to go as deep as we want in a particular task, and therefore our performance is always going to be limited. I highly recommend checking out the book, The Power of Full Engagement, to see this at play. And so task switching by jumping from different tasks, you're checking your email, then you're you know, calling a client, then you're trying to be sharp for a meeting. Like These are all different tasks that mess up your brain, your ability to be productive. Similarly, when people are in the gym, program hopping in the gym and doing different things at different times, it's going to make you less effective. It's going to send different signals to your body and your focus is going to be all over. And so what we need to be able to do is start batch tasking processes that are similar so we can max be maximally productive with the time that we do have. As an example, if you are going to be able to focus on your work, like are there times a day where you need to do deep creative work where you can be uninterrupted? Focus those tasks on that different point. Are there different times are going to be more reactive? Maybe you're answering emails. You are you know, looking at feedback, stuff like that. Can you batch all of those together? The research on this stuff is also really interesting where it's like when people are having a lot of unplanned interruptions throughout the day, it can take 23 minutes to get back on track, right? And so ideally what we need to do, not just in fitness, but really in every area of life is when possible, we need to batch processes and tasks so we are set up to be able to fully engage with whatever is in front of us. That allows us to go deeper, get into a flow state, and then we can perform at our best. In the gym, this equates to being clear cut on what your programming is. So it's all focused on one clear cut direction instead of jumping all around, hoping to get results. The eighth trait of winners is the ability to control impulses. Now, everybody has impulses. Again, everyone has vices. Everybody has shit that they are going through. But by and large, those who are going to be winners do a better job of controlling their impulses, especially ones that work in detriment to their main goals in life. Again, the idea here is not to be perfect and think that people who succeed have something magically different about them, but they generally take certain steps to be able to control their ability to avoid immediate gratification and be able to focus on things that are going to lead them to the long-term result that they are after. And for example, Winners are not always motivated. They have the ability to take action on their goals rather than give in to impulses, such as a lack of motivation to exercise, a lack of motivation to do what's needed directly with work. And so, for example, you're somebody who tends to give in to just eating whatever you want because you're bored and it becomes an impulsive type thing. Like that's something that's going to be working against your desires, against your desire to achieve the body that you want, to have the health that you want, to have the discipline that you want, to be able to make promises to yourself and to keep them. So what we need to think about is what are the impulses? What are the things that are pulling you directly away from your goals? When you pull up your phone, is it full of notifications and it leads you, leads you to doom scroll directly on social media? Is it you always have junk food around the house and then you start to eat it because you're bored, because you're stressed out? What is it? When we can start to understand maybe what these triggers are, what these impulses are that we have, especially the ones that are incongruent with the things that we want to do most, then we can start to set our environment up for success. Then we can start taking the actions that we need in order to achieve the results that we want.
The ninth trait of winners is time management. If you don't prioritize what matters to you, what matters to you most, it's not going to get done. A lot of people say, wait for the perfect time. They want to wait for the next paycheck. They want to wait for X, Y, and Z different things. And then that time never actually comes, right? The idea of waiting for this perfect time is one huge issue. And primarily it happens because people are not good at actually managing the time that they currently have. The reality is, yeah, we all have demanding schedules and we still have the same 24 hours in the day. Now, I realize it's a little bit different for a 35-year-old man versus a 35-year-old woman who might be a single mother. Like these are all different things to factor in. But the reality is like, if we look at our phone objectively and we look at the screen time, we're going to find out that we have a lot more time than we think that we do. And if your priority, for example, is building your business, spend the first part of your day building your business. If your priority is improving your health, work out early in the day before distractions take hold. In both examples, Heck, when I started building my business years ago, it was meeting up at 3.34 in the morning and writing articles for 60 to 90 minutes before I went and trained clients in the gym. Why? Because I knew if I did it early on, I would get it done. If I waited till later on, I would be tired. I would be exhausted from working all day. And frankly, I wanted to spend time with my girlfriend, fiance, and now wife, right? Same thing with health. If you want to be able to get healthy, but you find that you can never stay consistent working out later in the day because work gets crazy... Make sure that you get it done first thing in the day, even if it's not fun, because you can do it in a distraction-free environment. So we have to get clear on what our priorities are and then manage our time sufficiently by focusing on the things that we can control when we can't control them versus being reactive to every other situation going on within our day. Finally, winners treat themselves like athletes. They realize that fitness is a force multiplier. When they are healthier, they are able to perform better in every other area of their life. I gave the example of my client, Tim, um, who's been an oil executive for years, and he, like clockwork, is in the gym at noon every single day. And this is despite having international travel, having a, his wife has her own business as well. He's got kids. Every excuse in the book to not work out. But you know what? He does it. He gets it done. He takes care of his body because when he takes care of his body, it takes care of his mind and it builds that discipline, that grit, and that determination. Another client of mine, Brian Peters, same exact thing. I've seen this man go from you know working in a large oil company to doing that while getting his master's degree and being a parent to going out on his own, starting his own business, exiting a business and starting another one, all while being a parent and driving an hour to the gym to show up at six in the morning to train Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This is just an example of somebody who is dialed in knowing that if they commit to improving their health and improving their body, it sets the table for improving every other area of their life. And while time could always be an excuse, they make the priority to take care of themselves, knowing that it's going to pay them back in every other area of their life that they also value. And so we have to think about the way that we eat, the way that we sleep, the way that we train. We're not always going to be motivated to do these things, but when we start to improve the overall health of this meat vesicle that we all inhabit on this earth, it's going to allow us to show up as the best version of ourselves. And just because you're not a competitive athlete at this point, doesn't mean that you can't be athlete minded, that you can't make this a priority. Because the better condition you are physically, the better condition you're going to be able to be resilient to stress and the more focus and the healthier you're going to be down to the cellular level. So ultimately, being a winner, however you want to deem that success, whether it's personally, professionally, physically, comes down to developing certain traits. And you probably won't have all of them all, all the time or right now, but the reality is they can all be developed. And so if you take these, you start to apply them one by one, you're gonna to start to notice dramatic improvements, not only in the way that you look, but also in the way that you feel and the way that you perform. It's important to remember that when we improve our health, it improves everything else inside of our body. And if we wanna be, be able to win during all these different seasons of our life, during different time periods of high stress and be able to overcome obstacles, then it's up to us to show up as that person that we want to be, to delay gratification. Remember, success comes down to the ruthless execution of the basics. If you can focus on these habits and stay consistent over time, you are going to be able to win. Do me a favor, drop me a five-star review or a comment directly over on YouTube. Let me know what you found valuable. I try to keep this free of any advertisements to make sure you're getting as much value as humanly possible. So in order to do that, I would appreciate your support. I'll talk to you next time. Hey, it's Eric here again. Now, there are three ways that I can help you look great naked. Number one, if you want to grab a free copy of the Look Great Naked Protocol to help you lose body fat without counting calories, then go to bachperformance.com backslash free training. Number two, if you're a busy guy looking to build muscle, then I recommend checking out our Minimalist Muscle Blitz, which has helped over 1,000 men build muscle without living in the gym. Just go to minimalistmuscleblitz.com. 
The link will also be available in the show notes. Or number three and last, if you want to work with me directly and get the best results possible, apply at bachperformance.com backslash coaching to look great naked without living in the gym. Until next time, my friend. Oh,